On to device number 10, Precious Remedies Against Satan's Devices. By working them to be frequent in comparing themselves and their ways with those that are reputed or reported to be worse than themselves. By this device, the devil drew the proud Pharisee to bless himself in a cursed condition. God, I thank thee that I'm not as other men are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. Luke 18, verse 11. Why, Satan saith, you swear but pretty oaths, as by your faith and troth, but such and such swear by wounds and blood, you are now and then a little wanton, but such and such do daily uh, defile and pollute themselves by actual uncleanness and filthiness. You deceive and overreach your neighbors in things that are but as toys and trifles, but such and such deceive and overreach others in things of greatest concernment, even to their ruin and undoings. You do but sit and chat and sip with the drunkard, but such and such sit and drink and are drunk with the drunkard. You're only a little proud in heart and habit, in looks and words. Remedy one. The first remedy against this device of Satan is solemnly to consider that there is not a greater nor a clearer argument to prove a man a hypocrite than to be quick-sighted abroad and blind at home than to see a mote in another man's eye and not a beam in his own eye, Matthew 7, 3, than to use spectacles to behold other men's sins rather than looking glasses to behold his own rather to be always holding his finger upon other men's sores and to be amplifying and aggravating other men's sins than mitigating of his own. Remedy two. The second remedy against this device of Satan is to spend more time in comparing of your internal and external actions with the rule, with the word, by which you must be judged at last and in comparing of yourselves with those that are worse than yourselves. Hmm, bring the word to your own life. That man that comparing himself with others that are worse than himself may seem to himself and others to be an angel, yet comparing himself with the word may see himself to be like the devil, yea, a very devil. Have not I chosen twelve, and one of you is a devil? John 6. Such men are like him, as if they were spit out of his mouth. Satan is called the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, because as God at first did but speak the word, and it was done, so if the devil doth but hold up his finger, give the least hint, they will do his will, though they undo their souls forever. Ah, what monsters would these men appear to be, did they but compare themselves with a righteous rule, and not with the most unrighteous men. They would appear to be as black as hell itself. Remedy three. The third remedy against this device of Satan is seriously to consider that though thy sins be not as great as those of others, yet without sound repentance on thy side and pardoning mercy on God's, thou wilt be as certainly damned as others, though not equally tormented with others. What though hell shall not be so hot to thee as to others? Yet must thou must as certainly go to hell as others, unless the glorious grace of God shines forth upon thee in the face of Christ. God will suit men's punishments to their sins. The greatest sins shall be attended with the greatest punishments, and lesser sins with lesser punishments. Alas, what a poor comfort will this be to thee when thou comest to die, to consider that thou shalt not be equally tormented with others, yet must be forever shut out from the glorious presence of God, Christ, angels, and saints, and from those good things of eternal life that are so many that they exceed number, so great that they exceed measure, so precious that they exceed estimation. Sure it is that the tears of heaven are not sufficient to bewail the loss of heaven. The worm of grief gnaws as painful as the fire burns. If those souls, Acts twenty thirty seven, wept because they should see Paul's face no more, how deplorable is the eternal deprivation of the beatifical vision. But this is not all. Thou shalt not be only shut out of heaven, but shut up in hell forever. Not only shut out from the presence of God and angels, but 
shut up with devils and damned spirits forever, not only shut out from those sweet, surpassing, unexpressible, and everlasting pleasures that be at God's right hand, but shut up forever under those torments that are ceaseless, remediless, and endless. Ah, souls, were it not 10,000 times better for you to break off your sins by repentance than to go on in your sins till you feel the truth of what now you hear? The God of Israel is very merciful. Ah, that you would repent and return that your souls might live forever. Remember this, grievous is the torment of the damned for the bitterness of the punishments, but most grievous for the eternity of the punishments, for to be tormented without end. This is that which goes beyond the bounds of all desperation. Ah, how to do the thoughts of this make the damned to roar and cry out for unquietness of heart and tear their hair and gnash their teeth and rage for madness that they must dwell in everlasting burnings forever. Device number 11. By polluting and defiling the souls and judgments of men with such dangerous airs that do in their proper tendency tend to carry the souls of men to all looseness and wickedness as woeful experience doth abundantly evidence. Ah, how many are there filled with these and such like Christ dishonoring and soul undoing opinions, these that ordinances are poor, low, carnal things, and not only to be lived above, but without also, that the scriptures are full of fallacies and uncertainties and no further to be heeded than they agree with that spirit that is in them, that is a poor, low thing, if not idolatry too, to worship God in a mediator, that the resurrection is already past, that there was never any such man or person as Jesus Christ, but that all is an allegory, and it signifies nothing but light and love, and such good frames born in men, and that there is no God nor devil, heaven nor hell, but what is within us, that there is no sin in the saints. They are under no law but that of the Spirit, which is all freedom, that sin and grace are equally good, and agreeth to his will, with a hundred other horrid opinions, which hath caused wickedness to break in as a flood among us. Remedy one, the first remedy against this device of Satan is solemnly to consider that an erroneous vain mind is as odious to God as a vicious life. He that had the leprosy in his head was to be pronounced utterly clean, Leviticus 13. Gross errors make the heart foolish and render the life loose and the soul light in the eye of God Error spreads and frets like a gangrene and renders the soul a leper in the sight of God. It was God's heavy and dreadful plague upon the Gentiles to be given up to a mind void of judgment or an inju inju injudicious mind or a mind rejected, disallowed, abhorred of God or a mind that none have caused to glory in but rather to be ashamed of. Romans 1, 28. I think that in these days God punisheth many men's former wickednesses by giving them up to soul-ruining errors, giving them over, Romans 1. Ah, Lord, this mercy I humbly beg that thou wouldst rather take me into thine own hand and do anything with me than give me up to those sad errors to which thousands have married their souls and are in a way of perishing forever. Remedy 2. The second remedy against this device of Satan is to Receive the truth affectionately and let it dwell in your souls plenteously. These interesting older words. When men stand out against the truth, when truth would enter, and men bar the door of their souls against the truth, God in justice gives up such souls to be deluded and deceived by error to their eternal undoing because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Ah, sirs, as you love your souls, do not tempt God, do not provoke God by your withstanding truth and outfacing truth to give you up to believe a lie that you may be damned. There are no men on earth so fenced against error as those are that receive the truth and the love of it. Such souls are not easily tossed to and fro 
and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, wherein they lie in wait to deceive. Ephesians 4.14. It is not he that receives most of the truth into his head, but he that receives most of the truth affectionately into his heart that shall enjoy the happiness of having his judgment sound and clear when others shall be deluded and deceived by them who make it their business to infect the judgments and to undo the souls of men. Ah, souls, as you would not have your judgments polluted and defiled with error, let the word of the Lord that is more precious than gold, even fine gold, dwell plenteously in you. Colossians 3.16 It is not the hearing of truth, nor the knowing of truth, nor the commending of truth, nor the talking of truth, but the indwelling of truth in your souls that will keep your judgments chaste and sound in the midst of all these glittering errors that betray many souls into his hands, that can easily transform himself into an angel of light. 2 Corinthians 11 that he may draw others to lie in chains of darkness with him forever. Oh, let not the word be a stranger, but make it your choicest familiar. Then will you be able to stand in the day wherein many shall fall in your right hand and on your left by the subtlety of those that shall say, Lo, here is Christ. Oh, there, lo, there is Christ. There is more wit than grace in his speech that counseled his friends not to come too nigh unto truth lest his teeth should be beaten out with its heels. Ah, souls, if truth dwell plenteously in you, you are happy. If not, you are unhappy under all your greatest felicity. It is with truth, saith Melanchthon, as it is with the holy water. Everyone praised it and thought it had some rare virtue in it, but offered to sprinkle them with it, and they will shut their eyes and turn away their faces from it. Remedy three. The third remedy against this device of Satan is solemnly to consider that error makes the owner to suffer loss. All the pains and labor that men take to defend and maintain their errors, to spread abroad and infect the world with their errors, shall bring no profit nor no comfort to them in that day, wherein every man's work shall be made manifest, and the fire shall try it of what sort it is, as the apostle shows in that remarkable scripture. 1 Corinthians 3. Ah, that all those that rise early and go to bed late, that spend their time, their strength, their spirits, their all, to advance and spread abroad God-dishonoring and soul-undoing opinions, would seriously consider of this, that they shall lose all the pains, cost, and charge that they have been or shall be at for the propagating of error, And if they are ever saved, it shall be by fire, as the apostle there shows. Ah, sirs, is it nothing uh, to lay out your money for that which is not bread and your strength for that which will not, which cannot profit you in the day that you must wake, make up your account and all your works must be tried by fire? Ah, that such souls would now at last buy the truth and sell it not, Proverbs 23. Remember, you can never overbuy it. Whatsoever you give for it, you can never sufficiently sell it. If you should have all the world in exchange for it. It is said of Caesar that he had greater care of his books than of his royal robes, for swimming through the waters to escape his enemies, he carried his books in his hands above the water, but lost his robes. Ah, what are Caesar's books to God's books? Well, remember this, that one day, yea, one hour spent in the study of truth, or spreading abroad of truth, will yield the soul more comfort and profit than many thousand years spent in the study and spreading abroad of corrupt and vain opinions that have their rise from hell and not from heaven, from the God of this world and not from the God that shall at last judge this world and all the corrupt opinions of men. Remedy four. The fourth remedy against this device of Satan is to hate, reject, and abominate all those doctrines and opinions that are contrary to godliness and that open a door to profaneness and all such doctrines and opinions that require men to hold forth a strictness above what the scripture requireth and all such doctrines and opinions that do advance and lift up corrupt nature to the doing of supernatural things which none can do 
but by that supernatural power that raised Christ from the grave. And such opinions that do lift our own righteousness in the room of Christ's righteousness, that place good works in the throne of Christ and makes them co-partners with Christ. And all those opinions and doctrines that do set up and cry up Christ in his righteousness as to cry down all duties of holiness and righteousness and all those doctrines and opinions that do make the glorious and blessed privileges of believers in the days of the gospel to be lesser, fewer, and weaker than they were in the time of the law. Ah, did your souls arise with a holy hatred and a strong indignation against such doctrines and opinions? You would stand when others fall, and you would shine as the sun in his glory, when many that were once as shining stars may go forth as stinking snuffs. <laughs> remedy five, the fifth remedy against this device of Satan, is to hold fast the truth, as men take no hold on the arm of flesh till they let go of the arm of God, Jeremiah 17. So men take no hold on error till they have let go of their hold of truth. Therefore, hold fast the truth. So this is fundamental. If we don't have our minds saturated with truth, we are wide open to all the errors. This is huge. 2 Timothy 1.13, Titus 1.9. Truth is thy crown, hold fast thy crown, let no man take thy crown from thee. Hath not God made truth sweet to thy soul, yea, sweeter than honey or the honeycomb? And wilt not thou go on to heaven, feeding upon truth, that heavenly honeycomb, as Samson did of his honeycomb? Ah, oh, souls, have you not found truth sweetening your spirits, and cheering your spirits, and warming your spirits, and raising your spirits, and corroborating your spirits? Have you not found truth a guide to lead you, a staff to uphold you, a cordial to strengthen you, and a plaster to heal you. And will not you hold fast the truth? Hath, hath not truth been your best friend in your worst days? Hath not truth stood by you when friends have forsaken you? Hath not truth done more for you than all the world could do against you? And will you not hold fast the truth? Great challenge. Is not truth your right eye without which you cannot see for Christ and your right hand which you cannot do for Christ, your right foot which you cannot walk with Christ? And will you not hold truth fast? Oh, hold fast the truth in your judgments and understandings, in your wills and affections, in your profession and conversation. Truth is more precious than gold or rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared to her. Proverbs 3. Truth is that heavenly glass wherein we may see the luster and glory of divine wisdom, power, greatness, love, and mercifulness. In this glass you may see the face of Christ, the favor of Christ, the riches of Christ, and the heart of Christ, beating and working sweetly towards your souls. Oh, let your souls cleave to truth as Ruth did to Naomi and say, I will not leave truth nor return from following after truth, but where truth goes, I will go where truth lodgeth, I will lodge, and nothing but death shall part truth and my soul. What John said to the church of Philadelphia, I may say to you, hold fast that which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. The crown is the top of royalty, such a thing as truth. Let no man take thy crown. Hold fast such a thing as truth. Let not man take thy crown. Hold fast the faithful word as Titus speaks, chapter 1, 9. You were better let go anything than truth. You were better let go your honors and riches, your friends and pleasures and the world's favors. Yea, your nearest and dearest relations. I, your very favors, hmm, your very lives, than to let go of truth. Oh, keep the truth and truth will make you safe and happy forever. Blessed are those souls that are kept by truth. Remedy six, the sixth remedy against this device of Satan is to keep humble. Humility will keep the soul free from many darts of Satan's casting and erroneous snares of his spreading as low trees and shrubs are free from many violent gusts and blasts of wind which shake and rend the taller trees. So humble souls are free from those gusts and blasts of error that rend and tear proud lofty souls. Satan and the world have least power to fasten errors 
upon humble souls. Boy, this trait is important. The God of light and truth delights to dwell with the humble. And the more light and truth dwells in the soul, the further off darkness and error will stand from the soul. The God of grace pours in grace into humble souls as men pour liquor into empty vessels. And the more grace is poured into the soul, the less error shall be able to overpower the soul or to infect the soul. That is a sweet word in Psalm 25, 9. The meek, the humble, will he guide in judgment and the meek will he teach his way. And certainly souls guided by God and taught by God are not easily drawn aside into ways of error. Oh, take heed of spiritual pride. Pride fills our fancies and weakens our graces and makes room in our hearts for error. There are no men on earth so soon tangled and so easily conquered by error as proud souls. Oh, it is dangerous to love to be wiser above what is written, to be curious and unsober in your desire of knowledge and to trust to your own capacities and abilities to undertake to pry into all secrets, to be puffed up with a carnal mind. Souls that are thus a soaring up above the bounds and limits of humility usually fall into the very worst of errors as experienced off daily evidence. And remedy seven, finally here, the seventh remedy against this device of Satan is solemnly to consider the great evils that errors have produced. Error is a fruitful mother and hath brought forth such monstrous children as set towns, cities, and nations on fire. Error is that whorish woman that hath cast down many, wounded many, yea, slain many strong men, many great men, and many learned men, and many professing men in former times and our time, as is too evident to all that are much left of God, destitute of the truth, and blinded by Satan. Oh, the graces that error hath weakened, and the sweet joys and comforts that error hath clouded, if not buried. Oh, the hands that error hath weakened, the eyes that error hath blinded, the judgments of men that error hath perverted, the minds that error hath darkened, the hearts that error hath hardened, the affections that error hath cooled, the consciences that error hath seared, and the lives of men that error hath polluted. Ah, souls, can you solemnly consider of this and not tremble more at error than at hell itself? This is the book for our day. God bless you.